Well, it's been cool. Like you've been with the Browns now. I think this is, you're coming into your fourth year, right? Fourth year, man. Contract year. You I love it. I mean? Dude, that's a big year. <laughs> yeah, it's a big year. Um, but the Browns, have been, it's, been, it's been awesome, bro. Dude, so two years ago in the playoffs, you guys beat the Steelers, uh, yeah. crushed them. Yeah, that we, had to feel good, man. No, because that rivalry had gone the Steelers' <laughs> yeah. way for a long time. And yeah, so like I got a lot of family members who are Steelers fans too. And then okay. getting to the Browns and then understanding the whole history behind the Steelers, the Browns, that whole conference, the Ravens, the Bengals, and, but especially the Steelers, they've been dominant in that in that conference for a long, long time. So I feel like that definitely kind of sparked it up uh, for for the for the his, for for the um, organization to get us to get that W and to do it in that type of fashion to go out there and dominate those guys. Oh, and so yeah. When you kind of put the seal on it with your interception, interception too, yeah, that was so it fun, was man. exciting, bro. I, yeah, man, that, that was a joy. I, I loved it. That's, you know? that's awesome. So when you got to the NFL, give us a little, because you kind of, you were one of those guys, and one of the cool things about guys that get to the NFL, I don't think people truly understand just how athletic you guys are. I mean, I played with guys that weren't good enough to make BYU. Our best player I ever played against when I was little in football wasn't good enough to play at BYU, and most of the best players don't go on to the NFL. To get to that level, the eliteness of the NFL, I mean, for you, how much more difficult was it taking that jump from going into college versus the NFL? Were you surprised by just how fast and strong and, and physical everybody was? 100%, bro. You know what I mean? The, the NFL is just a different animal. It's a different breeze. You know, the guys are, are stronger, faster, bigger, and they're the best of the best. You know, the cream of the crop, they was, they always say, you know what I mean, and what the NFL – and then they have draft every year trying to <laughs> be a guy that can take your job that's younger, that's faster, you know, all you know, the whole nine yards. That's why they have these little combines. But um, when I got to the NFL, it was definitely an eye-opener, you know what I mean, just to see how fast the game is played. And then people don't know, you got to be you got to be a really, really knowledgeable guy to be on the field and to be out there playing, you know, because they don't trust you and they won't – Put you on the field if you can't run the scheme, and that's what I had problems with early on with Bronco, mm. is I just didn't know the scheme, and so me and Bronco would have many arguments on the sideline because I just wanted to play. I just had raw talent, but I didn't know the scheme, and so um, same thing when I got to the NFL. You know, I thought I, you know, I, I learned a lot, and then it's a different animal. So you know, how did you of, how did you overcome that? Did you just study that much? I more just had to. I, I put in countless hours, bro. I'd, I'd get home late, man. You know, and then study even longer i'd be going to sleep like 11 p.m and your sleep is important right but we're ready to get off you know training camp you get off like nine you know what i mean and so i go home and i still study even though i was there till 6 a.m this morning you know what i mean so i just had to put in a lot of extra time when it came to the x's and o's watching film just that just to catch up and so if you look at my rookie year that's why i didn't play a lot you know what i mean because they knew okay this guy he'll develop but you know right now you know what i mean he needs to learn a lot and so that's that's really what happened with me with my rookie year i just learned and then going on in the off season i just i continue and then that's where we get our edge bro people don't know it's yeah. just right here it's just it's uh the smarts you know of the game and kyle i bet will tell you because you know they'll we'll do bring that. in i tell this story so when his senior year they were playing texas i think it was the second or third game of the year oh, yeah and leading up to the game, I asked him, he was in my house, and I said, I said, so how you uh, how you'll converse Texas, man? He goes, oh, we're going to win. I go, why is that? He goes, well, they have a freshman quarterback. They only play 18, 19 plays. He goes, I know all of them. Yeah. He'd been watching enough film. He knew every play. <laughs> and if you Googled Kyle Van Noy's five best games ever, <laughs> Texas is Texas, number one or number yeah. two after the San Diego State Bowl game. He, he, he balled out because he told me, he goes, I knew where everything was going. He goes, even the punts, I know what they do. He knew everything. And I was like... Oh shit. And it was funny because Kyle kind of just was aloof on his interviews. He didn't really care. Uh -huh. And so people just thought he was dumb. And I'm like, this dude's a genius. He ended up running Bill Belichick's defense. Like, oh, I know. I, uh, you have to be super freaking intelligent because you're the middle linebacker. You're a linebacker. I mean, it's oh, yeah. you're running the, the show there. You have to know everybody's stuff, every set. I mean, give us an idea. Like, how many different. So you're playing, let's say you're playing the Steelers, right? Mm -hmm. How many different things, sets, and things do you have to know when you're calling the defense like that? Yeah. So there's going to be a ton of checks. You know, you play a good team like the Steelers or Ben Roethlisberger, he's going to make checks at the line. And so we we, we would scheme up, you know, certain um, uh, formations that they're in, two by two, three by ones. And we would try to understand, you know, okay, when they're in three by one. And we watch defense as – we watch uh, film as a whole. So, mm. you know, everyone's kind of on the same page. The only people that really get like kind of like a, 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 a pass is kind of the D linemen. Because, okay. you know, they're just up there kind of wrecking havoc. But the back seven – 
And especially like you kind of said, the linebackers are the quarterback of the of the defense. Right. You know, we're quarterbacking everything, every movement, every stunt from the from the front four to the back. You know, four. So, um, you know, we, we quarter four. Uh, Cover four, cover three, um, we would kind of mix up when we play like Ben Roethlisberger just to kind of give him a different look. And to be honest, the safeties have to be really, really good yeah. at what they show. You know what I mean? Showing, you know, one high to two high, kind of giving him that look. And I feel like that's kind of what happened. And early on, that that Ben, uh, when we played the Steelers, for example, like, you know, they kind of gave us those seven points, you know, early on. But then from there, we kind of gave Roethlisberger a different kind of looks of cover three and cover four, you know, especially with the safety. And then we brought blitzes out of there, you know, two blitzes where we'll, we'll blitz the safety and outside linebacker um, and run different stunts. And I, I feel like... Since once we got them, you know, once it was like 21 0, it was just hard for them to catch up. But to answer your questions, just we give them a bunch of looks, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. and we try to make everything look similar, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So if we're running cover three, we're going to make it look like a cover four, too, you know what I'm saying? And how our safeties are showing, how our linebackers are stacked, you know what I mean? And then when we're running cover three, we'll make it look like we're running cover four, and then we just kind of. Well, that's what's fun to watch. I mean, this year you had all these new um, premier NFL quarterbacks got drafted early, right? And mm-hmm. from, you know, you got Trey Lance and, and, and uh, you know, Zach Wilson and, mm-hmm. and all the other ones, Trevor Lawrence, yeah. and all of them looked horrible and what you yeah. realize is they have the talent but what you're explaining when everything looks the same and all of a sudden the guy's supposed to be here and he's just not the defenders in a totally different place you can only imagine that those guys are just like holy cow i can be- only because we're t- not only we're trying to make everything we're trying to make our, our blitzes look the same too you know what i'm saying so not only are we running a certain play we're trying to really we're now it's playing chess against the qb because now you know ben's back there and down set and then all of a sudden our court our uh, safety will rotate down. Oh, dang, is it cover three now? And then he'll back pedal out, and now we're playing cover four. Wow. You know, so we're running a lot of stuff that, you know, was can hurt a lot of teams. And I feel like we've been, we've been obviously, we, we got some work to do, but we've been pretty. Yeah, you guys had a very interesting team, a lot of characters on your team. Um, you had right. a lot of big names, Baker <laughs> Mayfield and OBJ and yeah. Miles Garrett, right? Um, you know, and it's... Um, what was the a locker room like? I know it seems, you know, obviously OBJ is gone now and they just brought in, you know, new quarterback and everything to Sean Watson. Um, just a lot of different things there. But was it just seemed like Cleveland was a very Hollywood like team for being Cleveland. It was kind of cool yeah, for being in Cleveland. No, it's crazy. You. Yeah, you hit it. We had a bunch of characters and a bunch of big names. You know what I mean? But in the locker room, I felt like we were still. We were still all pretty solid, and we were still trying to get, you know, reach those goals. I felt like we never really had anything big that kind of stood out. Obviously, our NFL locker room is crazy, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously to answer that question. And when you're in film, you know, like for example on defense, because I could talk a lot about the defense, you know, there was times where, you know, guys got in a fight with the coaches and there was yelling, and that's normal. That's normal in NFL because sure. you know when you guys got 50 are fifty alpha males that are 50, designed yeah, yeah. to exactly. come from aggression. I mean, exactly. So, like from that standpoint, like you know, trying to win, we we were all there, and then kind of being in you know with offense and defense in the same locker room. You know, I really didn't see too much that was kind of crazy that kind of popped out. You know what I mean? But I think they probably hit it. You know what I mean? Because I knew I knew that Baker and uh, Odell, you know, had some. Obviously, it it's not it's not a secret. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now it's all over social media. So. Right. You know, but what, what me being a player there, you know, I never really saw. You know, I would see, you know, Odell here fr- frustrated here and there. And you know, being like, damn, like I want the ball mm-hmm. or, you know, I want to win, you know, in the locker room or in the sauna when we're chopping it up. <laughs> but I never really seen anything, you know, crazy stand out, you know, because I feel like they kept those, you know, yeah. keep it kept it tight, you know, so they don't kind of really spill spill it out. But from from being in the locker room, you knew that something was wrong, but nothing crazy. Kind of right. just, you yeah. know. It's just a little vibes a little, a little bit little off. Vibe was but isn't it crazy how much it affected your outcome because from it year does. to year and you guys had some it injuries did. this year, you it know, and that's the part like Baker comes out looking amazing, then he gets a couple injuries and now all of a sudden they bring in a new quarterback. The oh. NFL is crazy like that. Oh, I seen Baker too. Like, man, you know, it was probably like the second time it popped out. He'd come in the weight room, you know, because they're, you know, obviously, you know, they're going through. He has certain uh, protocol and uh, a certain lift that he does because, you know, his shoulder was popping out. And I remember one day he comes in, he's like, my fucking shoulder's hurting. And that's when we knew. I, you know, everybody that was in the weight room kind of knew, like, oh, dang. 
Like he's hurting. He's going because he it. hit it kind of well, you know what I mean? But I think like week six, you know, when we were losing, I think uh, we were losing a couple games in a row. I think that's when he kind of like voiced it like, hey, my shoulder's hurting. But Well, the, the thing about the NFL, it's different than other things because if you get hurt, you can be replaced very quick. I mean, they'll just cut quick. you. And so you kind of have to play through injuries, right? I mean, yeah. you played through your injury this last year. I did. You know, I tore my labrum in week nine and then I kind of played through it I, and to be up front like I wanted to play I want to be out there with my guys sure. playing and you never want to sit games out you know that's just the competitive nature that we play in right and then um but I didn't feel like a couple weeks in I felt like man I'm not myself you know what I mean I and I am doing things that you know naturally I'll just boom and make this play but I felt like I was out there just half-assing it but um we made it work but kind of to answer your question yeah man you play banged up that's just kind of the nature of the of, of the beast, you know what I mean? You're gonna play hurt after week one. You're gonna have little dings, little scratches, little bumps, and you kind of just learn how to play through those things. And you know, they they you know the, the the saying around the league is the best ability is availability. That's really <laughs> that's really the league, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like who can stay, you know, healthy the longest. Well, and who can, yeah, well, it was like the Buccaneers two years ago when they won it all. They were the healthiest team. You yeah, know? And and every year it seems like that's one of the biggest factors in who ends up winning the whole thing yeah because like one piece goes you know goes down then you gotta kind of remove and i see it every day you know uh you know we would lose guys and then you just kind of change the scheme just a little bit you know to favor one side mm -hmm. than the other and uh you try to make it work and then you know obviously when if you lose a game you're just kind of like dang what if yeah you know what i mean so it's such a difficult road to the NFL. I'm sure there was many naysayers or people that told you, you know, or were worried about like, um, but you kind of just went all in, right? And I think that's in, how bro. you have to do anything in life. I tell everybody, go for your dream, man. Because at the end of the day, you know, there's so much value. And even if you don't end up doing it, there's so much value in going for it because you don't have those what ifs. But I love your story because you just, because I've heard you talk about this before, but like people were telling you you were crazy or maybe it wasn't the right fit or whatever, and, but you just kept going for speed no it's the truth bro like you know obviously if you look at my history from high school uh to college you know I, full, i've been all ball that's really the way that i was going to get out you know my struggles you know the life that i was living i was like ball is what i'm doing you know and i made up my mind when i was young you know obviously just watching my parents struggle and i knew football you know was going to be it but yeah man you know, I got to college, and a lot of people were just kind of like this guy. And early on, that's why me and Bronco were bumping heads because, you know, the top floor would be like, dude, he's not showing up to classes. He's not showing up for uh, reviews and studies hall. And I'd be downstairs getting the extra lift or mm -hmm. watching film or doing something because I was all ball, was all bro. I yeah, was like yeah. football. And like you said, you have to – in this game, bro, if you want to be successful, if you want to thrive, and I feel, and I know for sure I'm, I'm a person who's striving in the league, you have to give it your all. Well, that's what people make the mistake of trying to have too much balance in their life. Yeah, too they, much. They're like, I'm going to be all these things. And it's like, no, no, no. If you want to be great at something, yeah. you do have to take massive action towards that one thing. Like in my life, you know, now – I don't have to be quite as unbalanced towards work, but my twenties, I tell people when I speak, I, I, there's a joke. I say, if you can find a picture of me in a bar or a club, I'll give you a thousand dollars. They yeah. don't exist. I was working yeah. 70, 80 hours a week, my entire twenties. And cause I knew if I got ahead in my twenties, all these doors would open for me and all these opportunities I could invest early, all these different things. But I was so motivated to just become the best early yeah. and you have to because you That's, can yeah. I, you can always be average but i was always just like damn man i don't want to be an average real estate agent like exactly. what a terrible existence you know and so for me it was like i'm going all in and look at you now you know what i mean with that method and i feel like i've took i've taken that method too yeah. i have put all my marbles in and when it came to class and you know obviously they and there was a lot of people talking you know like oh, okay like football's not gonna be you know all, and i know it's nfl not for long but i knew that if i put all my marbles in it and continue to i'd be sitting where i am right now you yeah, know and, and i'm not saying i made it because there's goal you know there's the heights and you know things that i want to reach but i'm saying like but no that you're proof though dude like you went all in on yourself you bet on yourself and i tell everybody this if you're listening to this like whatever your dream is go for that because at the end of the day yeah. like you can always go do whatever else. I mean, you've, you know, and we've talked a little bit about real estate and some other things yeah. like there's opportunities that are always going to be there, but you've got this opportunity right now that you're taking advantage of. And it's fun to watch, man. I, I just give so much credit. I know the ability of an NFL football player.